Again, if you're not familiar with Florida A&M, it is banned from the NCAA postseason play and the MEAC postseason tournament this year due to the program's lack of APR performance the last four years. And basically, this is a program rebuilding from scratch, from the ground up. Six projected returnees from last year all transferred away. And seven players were lost due to graduation or due to their eligibility being exhausted. 14 newcomers, a new staff, seven freshmen, five juniors, one sophomore, one senior. Everyone's either a freshman or a transfer from somewhere else. 0-10 on the year, losing by an average of 25 points per game so far this season, including a 53-point loss to New Mexico State, a 45-point defeat on opening night against Clemson on the road. Played its first nine games on the road this year and now has a two-point lead to begin the second half on the road here at East Carolina. We just saw Coach Samuel speaking to the troops before they come out. Recruiting is selling. This man's got to be the greatest salesman in the history of the world because it's a tough sale to get kids to come in the situation he was in, but they believe in him. They believe in the system. He's got two incoming freshmen that I was talking to him about today. He thinks are really good. And... Uh, this is their NCAA tournament, because as you said, they're not eligible for the conference or the postseason. They're playing a tournament game every night. Uh, Jermaine Rutley lays it in for his sixth point of the game, playing with two fouls, and Florida A&M leads by four. The zone has been good to the Rattlers. They're going to stay in it when they score. East Carolina, you know, talked about it, because that's all they saw after they made field goals in the first half if they attack it any differently in the beginning of this half. And with eight on the shot clock, a hand check foul called on Craig Bowman of Florida A&M. That's his first. That's just a rule. You get the second hand on a ball handler. Whether you shove him or not, it's an automatic call. I don't like the rule, but that's the rule. Started with the hand checking. They took that away. Now they take the other one away. Terry Wisnett missing on the three. Zangari inside, and the putback is good. We talked about early in that first, or later in the first half, they did not go to the offensive glass well. Speaking of the Pirates, you know Coach Lebo talked about that, and Zangari got a putback. Craig Bowman short on the three, and Robinson comes away with a rebound for East Carolina. White in the corner, open for three, and he put it in. Coach Lebo emphatically says, get up there and press. And here comes Florida A&M, three on two. Rutley, hanging jumper, and he lays it in off the window. Eight points for Rutley. And then a turnover on East Carolina on the inbounds play, number six in the game for the Pirates. Well, East Carolina coming off a 12-point loss at UNC Wilmington on Saturday night. The Pirates in that game shot a season-low 28% from the field and made only 18 shots. They were 18 of 64 in the game. White again in the corner. No good on the three, but B.J. Tyson gets the rebound. Well, they're pounding the offensive guys. You know, I like they didn't shoot the ball well, but they're not hesitant. If they're open, they let it go. If you hesitate, your confidence is going. There's no way you're making a shot. So I like the attitude they're coming out with in the beginning of this second half. Coach Rebo, once they scored, yelled at him, get up and pressure. They're not going to back up. They want to put the heat on the visitors and protect their home court. Sometimes they get stuck on a side like this against this zone. That, that's not a good thing. You've got to move the ball back and forth. Make the defense move. White for three again. Caleb White has two threes in the game. He has eight points. And the Pirates have the lead back by two. And a foul called on Antonio Robinson of East Carolina. That's his first of the game. Caleb White's a big kid at 6'7". He stretches that defense, especially against his own. You've got to go chase him. It opens it up for other guys inside. And if you don't cover him, he does what he did that time. And Caleb White called for the personal foul. That's his first away for the ball as he grabbed the man he was guarding, Byron Samuels. 
His team hanging around. It led by two at the break, only trails by two now. Early moments of the second half of play. Rutley against Tyson, and now he gives it over to Jaran Foster for Florida A&M. East Carolina's been man-to-man -man the entire basketball game. And another hand check foul. This one called on Caleb White of East Carolina. Coach Lebo did not quite agree with that call by the <laughs> gestures he made as he got up from the bench. Not quite. Not quite. It's funny, though. The guys in the striped shorts rarely say, you know, Coach, you're right, I'll change my mind. They don't do that. And a bad pass on the inbounds play, but recovered by Spicer of Florida A&M. What East Carolina has to do, in my opinion, at this end is not let the Rattlers go where they want, but force them to go where you want them to go and not give them open threes like that. And Spicer hits the three. That's his first three-point field goal made on the season. He's now 1-4-2 on the year. And the Rattlers have a one-point lead. Spicer's got an opportunity to play because of the guys that aren't here. We talked about the academic issues, so he's taking advantage of that, of that opportunity. And a turnover on East Carolina. It's seventh of the game. It's not a lot of turnovers. That's not a bad thing. Shouldn't have had that one, though. Just a poor pass. Force them to go where you want them to go, not where they want to go, and then you impose your will upon them like that. Tough shot in the reverse layup attempt by Rutley. Here comes East Carolina. Tyson almost lost it. Finds White. He's got the hot hand, and he buries another three. He has three threes in the game. He has 11 points, and the Pirates reclaim the lead by two. That's a pretty stroke from the big lefty right there from the wing and then from the top. Nice backdoor pass inside to Spicer, who scores. He beat the freshman on a cut right there. DJ Tyson fell asleep for a split second, got beat on the cut layup. Spicer out of Miami, Florida, gets his fifth point of the game. Turnover on ECU. Three on two. Rutley can't finish, but the tip-in is good by Spicer again. And the Rattlers have the lead back by two. Jonathan Spicer averaged 1.5 points a game and not a lot of playing time. Getting an opportunity of coming through for his coach and his team. Zangari goes to the right-handed hook and barely misses it inside, though, is in Ziggy, and he scores. Loose ball on the floor, picked up by East Carolina. In Ziggy again, yes. I love it when the big guys use the glass. The press turned it over, they got a layup. And the Pirates have the lead back by two at 42 to 40. Once again, you can't take the Put off the gas pedal on defense. Florida a very patient when they have to be, and they're getting good shots because of that patience. Another good one. Foster for three. That's way short, and the rebound to Tyson for ECU. Here comes Robinson. Finds Zangari wide open for three, and just rattled it out. Rebound by Spicer for Florida a and That was a great shot. Defense contracted because the ball got to the rim. Zingari was dead wide open, just didn't make it. Florida A&M averages 50 points per game this season. It already has 40, and there's a steal by Inziggy. And a jam! Coach Lebo emphatically said, get up and press. The press has been working. The cumulative pressure is working. Pirates by four. Ball deflected out of bounds off of ECU. It stays with Florida A&M, and we get a timeout on the floor, 14-31 remaining in Greenville. Back and forth in the second half, but the Pirates at home lead it by four over Florida A&M.